Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have some shoulder movement, a little bit of strength. So like anything, we're gonna push it a little bit. We got a big race coming up in May. And I think we're gonna end up taking the 07. Um, some of the stuff with the 05 is just not ready yet. And I really don't feel like roaching a brand new setup. So that one's probably gonna be parked unless a miracle happens. So let's continue on with this 07 engine build series. So we covered out how to clean it. Now we're gonna cover how to measure. This is a very controversial topic depending on who you ask. There are many ways to do it. Uh, I am familiar with two methods. That is the uh, dial bore gauge method and then also the plastic gauge method. Obviously plastic gauge is not the recommended way. However, I've used it. As long as you know what you're doing, and you install the plastic gauge correctly, it can be quite effective. However, tonight we're gonna go over the um, caliper method. So to do this, you do need a little bit of an expensive tool. The first thing, you don't wanna be measuring anything. Hold on here. You don't wanna be measuring anything with a digital caliper, just not very accurate. Um, we got here and then we also need our dial bore gauge and we'll also need our outside lines. now there is a lot of sets out there and they are not cheap this set i got here is powerhouse i don't know if they're the best brand but they've been pretty accurate and they come with a nice zeroing index over here we have a Fowler dial bore gauge now like Miti Mitioyo or Mitiuyu they make like a digital one that is a nice piece this one is not that good um, I just bought this one not too long ago because my other one broke and last but not least we have a set of t-bar gauges so what we're gonna do first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure our pistons from there, we're gonna measure our bores. From there, we're gonna measure our crankshaft, rods and mains. And then we're gonna put the main studs, main caps with bearings in there, torque those down and get our main uh, measurement. And then lastly, you're gonna go ahead and torque the rods with bearings in it and get your rod measurement. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so you get your pistons laid out like so. Again, these were Valve relief 40 thousandths. And what I do is I label the workbench. So I have one, you guys can kind of see, this isn't the first time we've done this. And this helps me keep the rods, the pistons, the rings all organized on this tabletop here as we go through the rotating assembly. Now, let's go ahead. We know these are roughly 4210. So you come over here to your mic set and we're gonna grab the um, four to five inch mic and let's go ahead and get these measured. All right guys, so now we're gonna measure our pistons. So what you're gonna wanna do is you guys can kinda see here, I'll try to hold my hand. The pistons tapered. This part is narrower than the base. So you want to make sure you're measuring the base here. Now, I'm doing the best I can with the camera angle I got. So I'm going to kind of hug you guys a little bit. And the way you use a mic, this is going to be your fine adjust or your rough adjustment. And this is what you tighten. And basically, you'll hear it kind of click. That's when you stop. You know it's tight. It's applied enough tension. Now, we know these are 4210. So we're going to go ahead and at least open up our outside mics to 4210 and then we're going to go ahead and measure you want to get at the base normally i do this with the piston in one hand mics in the other but you know this bum shoulder so it should have a slight amount of drag so go ahead and lock that down now i'm going to show you guys how to read this okay First, we have a four to five, so you know it's gonna be four, all right? Then, if you look right here, 
you guys can see these gradients right here. 0, 1, 2, it goes all the way to 9. So this is 4 point, and then we start here. So we can see a 2, right? So on our notepad here, we're going to go ahead and jot down 4.2. Now, you guys see these numbers here? They go up to 25. Now, these quarter hashes in between the 0 and the 1 and the 1 and the 2 stand for 25. So because we can't see any lines, we know that this value is going to be somewhere between 0 and 25. So what we do here is we look. Now, you guys can see we are a little bit past uh, nine, th or 9 here. And if you look, we got 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. So we know that's 9. So the next two numbers are 0, 9. Then, if you guys look here, there's a gradient from 0 to 10. You're going to find the one that lines up perfectly. Now on ours, it looks like... Dang, it's pretty close to 0. Nope, right there, 1. So that's going to be our last number there. So what this looks like on paper is this. 4.2091. Now we're going to go ahead and knock out all these for the pistons, get our numbers recorded, and move on. All right, so I ended up redoing that one because it just didn't seem right. As you guys can see here, we have ten thousandths, thousandths, hundredths, tenths. So what we're looking at is they're all within a couple of ten thousandths of each other. I think the gap's about six. Now, number four piston is a little bit bigger than the rest. And we always bore out number six cylinder a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to take piston four here and swap it for six here. That way it's somewhat even. Now, your pistons are measured. The other thing that we're going to measure is the inside diameter of the wrist pin here. And make sure we have good oil clearance between the wrist pins over there and the wrist pin bore in the piston. Now on the pins, we're just going to a smaller um, mic here. So we'll go ahead. Measure it out. And then I always double check the bottom here, make sure it's good. These are all coming in extremely close. Nice little drag. And you'll hear people talk about the measuring marks. Sometimes you can kind of see, especially on the bearings, um, you can see the where you run the dial bore gauge through. But again, guys, just kind of gently running it through there. So I'm going to go ahead and call all of our pins 1.575 zero now we're going to move on to the dial bore gauge here or sorry t-bar t-bar gauge so it even breaks it down for you inch and a quarter to two and an eighth yep this will be the one right here so to use these you spring them in you twist this down and then you open it like that and you'll go ahead lock it down you'll kind of cock it in the bore and then pull it out. So I'll try to demonstrate here. Again, we're gonna go ahead and collapse it, tighten it down. You guys heard me open it like so, kind of a little bit at an angle. Here, let me do it like this so you guys can see. So you go ahead, push it in, right? And you wanna make sure it's uh, even, uh, stick out on each side or somewhat close to even at least. 
she'll go ahead and lock this down. A little bit cocked. You guys can see, you just want to make it a little bit longer. And then you're going to go ahead, rotate it up. The measurement's locked in. Then you take your outside mic and you're going to go ahead and measure this. I usually hold it against my body here. Oof. Trying to get this on camera is going to be rough. I had a machinist teacher when I was in school. He only had like two fingers on this hand. And what you guys can see here, we have just a skosh over. I'm gonna go ahead and write this down. All right, so we have about half a thousand oil clearance. Go ahead and run through the rest of these. Now that we're done with all of the piston bores, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the piston bores, subtract the pin diameter, and that's gonna give you your wrist pin oil clearance. Basically, we have just under a thousandth of oil clearance. In my experience, from what I have seen assembling engines, that's about normal. Um, I noticed when Drew put together my engine, it was a little bit bigger, but I think because he has that pressure lubed rod that feeds the wrist pin, they're doing something a little different there. Not the end of the world, but I digress. Okay, so we got our pistons measured. That is officially it. That's all I do on these. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the block bore. And what that's going to give us is our piston to wall measurement. Now, uh, a while ago on Instagram, on a story, I showed you guys a cheat cut or a shortcut. Really, all I was trying to do was show you guys how tight the bores were. Basically, you jam a feeler gauge into the bore. You drop the piston in and basically the feeler gauge, uh, the one that you can barely just get the piston down through the engine cylinder block, uh, that is going to be usually what I found is about a half thou more than that uh, feeler gauge measurement. Again, it is not accurate. It was just a way to demonstrate how tight the bores were. So let's go ahead, take this opportunity to show you guys how to do it right. All right, so now we have our dial bore gauge um, set up here. We ended up going with the 1.6 and then the 20,000 shims. We had to do two of them and we can now actually read what's going on in the bore here. Get this thing in here. So you guys can kind of see we rock this down like so and you're watching the needle move, right? Now we have to go ahead and figure out what is what on this uh this setup here. Okay, so we're going to set up zeroing this. We know the bore size is 4210. So we get our mic set right there to 4210. And then usually I will use a vise, but basically what you want to do is get this right here. That's going to be kind of tricky to show you guys, but basically use this to set the zero of the caliper or the dial bore gauge rather sorry so basically you're going to rock it back and forth until you find out what zero is zero was right around here so we're going to go ahead and loosen up this nut here so we can spin this and zero is kind of right around here ish so we'll leave that loose and we'll just keep rocking it back and forth. You guys get the drift. I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this up in a vise where I can't get the camera and get this zeroed. All right, now that we got that zeroed, um, we're gonna go ahead, lock down our adjustment window here. It's this screw right there. And now we're gonna go ahead, dowel bore, measure this. Thanks. Go bro down. All right, so what you're doing is rocking this back and forth. See how the numbers are ascending there? So that's the smallest. So we were at like, let's see here. Let me get on your guys' level. See how it goes back down? So that's the biggest part. So we're at 4,210 plus 6,000. So 
four, two, one, six is going to be the bore. And you just kind of go ahead, rock it down and you want to make like a Y. So you want to measure it this way, this way, this way. And basically what I do usually on a freshly honed block, there's not much, but you're checking for taper, which means it gets bigger, the higher up this is. And you're checking for out around, which generally on a Cummins, they go out around this direction here. And then the taper, it's bigger here, smaller down there. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and do cylinder one. Four, two, one, call that six. Then what we're gonna do is go ahead and knock them all out and I will get back to you guys. So just as we suspected, number six is larger. So now to get your piston into wall clearance, you're gonna subtract the piston diameter into this, and that's gonna give your piston a wall. So just for rough math, we got three, well, shoot, I'm gonna need my calculator. It is way too late, but I'll go ahead and show you guys what we end up with. So here's our piston to wall. We have eight thousandths. Uh, and as you guys can see, we ended up a little bigger on one and six. We do that because one and six tend to be the hottest cylinders. So you give yourself a little bit more room for piston expansion. Um, now that we have that done, that is going to conclude your pistons, all of it. So we have our wrist pin clearance, our piston to wall. And now we can go ahead and flip this thing over and get to the mains. Now we're on to the mains. We have a set of mollies here. Uh, we use the cleavite bearings on pretty much everything. You have, oh, let's see here. Over here, you have your molly P bearings. Then you have, those are raw bearings, but they also have HX mains. And then you have your H's. And the cool part about the H's, they have a coating on them. This is a mock-up set, but you guys kind of get the drift there. These ones are kind of trash at this point, but oh well. Moving on. So what we're gonna do is get our bearings cleaned. I just use some brake clean and compressed air. I get them blown off. We'll go ahead and get our bearings set in here. Very hard to screw this up, guys. This is where that thrust goes. Um, and basically all the bearings that have the uh, oil passage are gonna go here or the ones with the hole in it. And then the other seven will go into the main caps over there. So. When we go to put this together, I'll cover assembly. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this set up. Okay, one thing I do wanna hit on, I get this call all the time on the phones here. See how that passage is blocked a little bit and this cam oil hole is smaller than the hole behind it right there? That's normal, guys. That is 100% normal. Without the passages semi-blocked, you would have a lot more flow which would decreased pressure. So all of these holes here are specifically designed to control the volume of oil through that orifice to make sure you have the adequate pressure at each point in this engine block. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the main caps on. Okay, so we have our 14 mil main studs bearings installed. Uh, don't worry guys, we will cover this in a later episode. Right now, this is all about measuring. So what we're going to do we have our dial bore gauge set to 3.270. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and start measuring all of our mains. Pretty easy, very similar to the cylinder wall. However, you want to avoid the flat spots in the bearings. Now, one thing to take into account is this bearing is not a true circle. This measurement here is generally a little bit looser than this measurement here. The whole thought behind it is as the crank gets shoved down, in this case up, it will stretch, you know, the cap deforms a little bit and it sucks this in tighter. Basically it's an oval like this, right? So it's wider here, narrower here. And then as it gets hammered from the piston coming down, it turns into more of a circular shape. So we're only gonna measure on these just horizontal 
like so. Uh, you do not need to um, measure this uh, in a three pattern like we did on the block. So we'll go ahead, get this knocked out. Just write down our number right here, which is mains. And be careful guys, there's seven of these. And then we're gonna go grab our, oh geez, our mic. And we're gonna put down our start point, which is going to be, yikes. Three point, we got two, seven, three point two, one, two, so seven, zero, and then zero here. All right, now what we can do is just write our markings, positive and negative, right here. So you come over here. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and measure. So you guys see they're getting smaller, getting bigger. So we are like, uh, what do you wanna call that, guys? Negative a thou and a half. Negative point zero zero one five, and we're gonna make our way slowly through this block, and then I will show you guys the results. There is our measurements. Now we go ahead and subtract from that. Uh, I will keep you guys posted. Okay, so that is our main bearing clearance right there. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and measure the crank. When I do the crank. I measure the mains and the raw journals all at the same time. And it's simply just because it's faster that way, in my opinion. But I will do all the mains first, then I'll do all the rods. That way, I do not keep having to readjust the tool. And then from there, we go ahead and put the crank away. The last thing, uh, and we'll cover this when we go to do the cam installation, is you have to measure the cam uh, tunnel and measure the cam outer diameter. Moving on to our crankshaft, we're gonna measure the main journals. Smaller ones are the rods, bigger ones are the mains. Again, just that little bit of drag on there. Goes through pretty easy when I can. Big thing is keeping this tool level. Oh, it's hard to do this one-handed. But anyway, you're gonna go through, measure all of them, and I'll check them in a few spots. Make sure that we're good. So you see there, when you get it right on, it kind of slides right in, slides right out. And then we'll measure it. This one's measuring at like three, two, six, six. And let's see here, six. Oof, that's a rough number there. So. Anyway, I'm gonna go through and measure all the mains. All right, now that we got our mains, we'll subtract the um, main caps from the mains and get our oil clearance. Here's what we're left with. Now, got about two thousandths. This one's a little tighter at a thousand and a half. If we were building a stock engine, I would send this. Factory specs, I think one to five. Um, since this is more of a high performance build, we're gonna go ahead and swap these out for HXs. HX means we're gonna get an extra thousandth of oil clearance. So we'll end up with just under three thousandths on the mains. Uh, again, you guys had asked about flipping bearings. Let's say these were at two and a half. Well, I would change half the bearings to H's, half of them to HX. That would give me an extra half thousandth of oil clearance. So you'll play this flip-flop bearing game. You can do the same thing on the rods. Guys, in an effort to keep this video a little bit shorter and easier to digest for you, um, I'm going to end it here. So we went ahead and we measured everything that we can um, to continue on with the rods. You're going to measure the rod journal. You're going to put the bearing in the rod, torque the rod, 
and then you will measure the um, rod diameter, you'll measure the crank diameter, subtract the two, and that will be your rod bearing clearance. And then um, from there, the only other measurement is the rod pin bushing. Uh, that would be the small end of the rod or here. this part of the rod right here. Um, there are tons of specs online to make sure you're within uh, factory spec. Uh, the bigger the horsepower, the higher the RPM, usually the looser I will go. Um, I've ran some up in the 5,000s range. Again, it just depends on what you're shooting for. I apologize. It was a little hard to see sometimes on camera. I did the best I could being a one-man band. Hopefully, you guys took away, number one, how to read an outside mic old school. Number two, how to set up zero and use a dial bore gauge correctly. And hopefully you guys learned how to actually measure this Cummins engine block. The good news is if this doesn't apply to you and you have a power stroke, a Duramax or a gasser, all the measurements that we did tonight, the, the numbers will change, but the things that you have to measure will be the same. Um, and then you'll need to look up the specs for your given application. The only thing we left out, checking the head and the block for flatness, which we will do as we assemble it. Um, piston protrusion, which obviously we can't do until it's in there. Crank end play, cam end play, cam diameter, and cam bore. I will hit those up as we install them. Um, again, this was just kind of bare bones of how you measure the block, pistons, piston wall, get some of your bearing clearances. And I gave you guys examples so you could go ahead and pay that forward. I will say one of the best things that you can do is get a rod vise or just a vise and wrap the jaws in paper towels to do the rods. It makes life a lot easier, especially when you're trying to torque them. Uh, the other thing that you could get that I don't have is V-blocks. That way you could set the crankshaft on the V-block, um, spin it and get your measurements. Again, how I do it with it sitting on the ground, it works for me and I've had good success with it. I'm a little too cheap to buy V-blocks, but hey, maybe, uh, Maybe we'll make some room in the budget for it for next time. Anyway, guys, hopefully this wasn't too boring. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any better ideas, things like that, drop them down below. Uh, I will be covering the plasti gauge method as we assemble it. I always plasti gauge them at the end. I don't know why, if I like just don't trust myself or what, but plasti gauge isn't a bad way to double check at the end. However, I would never rely on that as your only source for measuring uh make sure you guys like this video subscribe like i said that we're gonna do the whole engine build series i promise i will try not to leave anything out for you guys uh up next will probably be uh installing the crankshaft into your engine and then uh ring grinding installing rings on the piston pistons on the rods and how to drop the rods in and basically put together the short block uh anyway guys i hope you enjoyed it I will catch you on the next one.